J. Grissom Meacham, a Presbyterian minister and an intellectual leader of American fundamentalism, was one of the most educated and well-known authors of his time. He taught at Princeton Theological Seminary until Princeton started to stray away from his beliefs, and he left and he started Westminster Theological Seminary. From there, he went on to be a principal figure in the founding of the OPC, if for no other reason than for the Presbyterian controversy in which he played a critical role in providing the backdrop for the denomination. In an influential book, Christianity and Liberalism, 1923, a classic text for Orthodox Christians battling the coercive advances of the modernism, he emerged as a chief spokesperson for the Presbyterian conservatives by delivering a scathing criticism of the Protestant modernism. The image of the traditional fundamentalist did not suit Mitchum. Not only was he a scholar of substance, he was someone who could compose and speak with civil grace and literary style. Reading Matchin's book, Christianity and Liberalism, Walter Lippmann, one of the outstanding journalists of that day, noted that not only was Machen both scholar and a gentleman, but his book was admirable. The best common argument made in the present controversy by either side and that everyone could do well to listen to Machen was his argument. A strong example of Machen's reasoning is the posting of the Ten Commandments in the public classrooms according to the Orlando Sentinel. The courts considered this Judeo-Christian morality a sign as unconstitutional. It is helpful to note that before Christian jail secular humanism, that a previous generation of Protestants insisted on posting these Ten Commandments. The King James Version was the translation that was used, and the strange wording was not the one that was memorized by most of the Protestant school children. The commandments were used as a tool in religious warfare in the 20th century, in addition to being a way of upholding biblical morality. The King James edition sent a great unwashed masses of Irish and Eastern European immigrants a strong Protestant message. It served as a constant reminder to Catholics, Jews, and other minorities, along with Protestant arms, of who was really in charge of the country. When one considers the materialism, one can only be horrified by the idea of a commonwealth where there is no escape from such a soul-killing scheme, Machen writes. Machen felt it was foolish for the government to order a non-Protestant how to worship their God. Furthermore, by predicting the pluralism of the American culture, he claimed that the religious freedom given to the minorities would one day be the same security that conservative Protestants would claim. One of the religious terms used very often in the public debate is fundamentalism. It is while reading this article in the Sun-Times that it is brought to light to me that if anyone calls you a fundamentalist, a compliment is not being paid to you. The implication is that if you're not a supporter of violence, you are a religious bigot. Machen tells us that secularists were not alone, but with a different motivation. He was worried about the credibility of faith groups that we read in the Bible, pray daily, and try to follow God's rule. When the church became the pawn of a thin and ambiguous public morality imposed by the state, he said this dignity trivialized and eventually undermined.